Hi, this is Osama Rizvi from Primary Vision Network and welcome to another episode of the Monday Macro View. Uh, recently, I've been focusing a lot on the health of the global economy uh, and we look at it through various indicators such as ISMs, PMI and whatnot. But today I am going to talk about the global economy, what's happening inside it, but from a different point of view, from a different lens and um, rather uh, taking in a bigger picture view of where are things headed in terms of the whole global economic uh, uh, shift that is underway at the moment. And to quote uh, the beautiful title and very insightful book of uh, the rock, uh, Dr. Uh, Parag Khanna, the future is Asian. So we're going to take a very brief look. Is, is that happening right now? I think it is happening to an extent. So let's take a look. But before that, a little bit about China because we're going to talk about China and what's happening right now in China. So in terms of Chinese um, oil imports or the Chinese overall economic health, and one of the reasons, one of the factors to have a look at it is the Chinese oil imports, we see that the the overall Asia, the the demand from Asia, uh, the oil, low, oil shipments, they dropped to seven months low. And within that, the majority, the major dent was from China. So Chinese oil imports fell. Um, the Asian oil imports fell as well, about 19% month on month. The similar trend was carried or seen um, in terms of the Chinese coal imports as well um, and, and and other commodities so as well. But what does it really hint towards? It hints towards a, a rather slowdown uh, or a weakening domestic demand um, in, in the la second largest economy in the world. And therefore, that ties very neatly to the other thread that we've been following that what is going to happen in the global economy? Are we going to have a recession? Um, is there still economic slowness in the global economy? So the answer is yes. And all the indicators, I will, as you will she, uh, see the, in the market sentiment record, all the indicators the point, highlight towards this point. Look at the second chart. It's Chinese, It talks about China's metal imports. So iron ore imports uh, in China dropped to 90.44 mi million tons in April, which was about 10% down from, month, uh, from March. Uh, similarly, in terms of copper, and the related products, uh, it fell from its 15-month high um, and um, it was about 12.5% lower uh, on year-on-year -year basis from April 2022. Uh, this, once again, to highlight, shows signs of slow slowdown in manufacturing sector, to say the least. So that's quite concerning. But as we're talking about China, now we're going to revert back to the overall theme and we're going to talk about China and Russia and their growing uh, uh, the bolstering uh, camaraderie the relation friendship uh, between both the countries especially after Russia became the most sanctioned country in the world so China imported about 88 billion uh, dollars uh, worth of dollars of uh, major commodities from Russia which is a 52 percent jump uh, as compared to 2021 it's a huge increase and and the other point is as you can see on your screen as well the other point fits in neatly with the other bigger picture debate which is the de-dollarization um, thing going on and much of this trade was conducted in yuan now to say that this is symptomatic of uh, the fact that the dollar will lose its value or its uh, weight in terms of the global financial system uh, or international trade is an uh, is is an exaggeration, of course, because there are multiple other factors, moving pieces that needs to be in consideration before uh, such a change happens. But still, this is huge, and this can at least be symptomatic of something that is brewing, and the outcome of which will come in the next uh, few six or seven decades or something like that. So all seaborne Russian oil sales, all um, piped gas imports through power of Siberia pipeline. All of these were um, settled in yuan. Uh, similarly, the second most in value uh, commodity, coal from Russia, about $12.2 billion, uh, that was also settled in yuan uh, from dollar. And the Chinese cross-border interpayment system, uh, the Chinese version of uh, SWIFT, uh, the transactions upon in using that system also jumped 22% year-on-year, -year, about $14 trillion in 2022 as per Reuters. So, uh, Similarly, uh, there was a 39% 30, uh, increase uh, on, on exchange trading uh, uh, in Russia uh, of the yuan ruble, ruble currency pair instead of the dollar. So these changes, these, these things show that there are some fundamental changes going on uh, in, the, in the global economy that uh, the observers or writers or policymakers need to 
be aware of, be cognizant of in devising the policies or making business decisions and whatnot. Uh, next, uh, another country, India. As we're talking about Asia, India is in the news uh, for many good reasons as well. Uh, it's it has overtaken uh, UK as the second, as the fifth largest economy, about to become uh, the largest, uh, popular, pop, the most populous country in the world. And iPhone, a Apple uh, opened its official flagship store in India as well. So a lot of development and India's economy naturally is becoming quite relevant to the region, not only the region, but the whole world. And the figures shows that India's uh, Russian oil imports jumped tenfold in 2020. Only in April uh, 2023, as compared to April 2022, there was a 530% increase in oil imports. The, to, it is important to note that the same share was only 2% in India's animal oil imports or that of the Russian oil. And India is a country that imports about 85% of its fuel oil, uh, fuel leads. And now it stands at 20%. And India has been able to save about 80 to $90 billion as part of this discount. Um, and in 2022, um, uh, I have it in front of me, the trade between Russia and India, it, it, it reached a record of about $190 billion. So that's, that's something very interesting. Sorry, uh, the trade between uh, China and Russia increased to $190 billion and that of the India is still has to catch up. It's about $35 billion. But what I'm trying to get at is that both of these huge economies, mega states uh, in the Eastern Hemisphere, in the Asian continent, they're playing a very important role. The next slide is a Google Ngram that I just wanted to see because the upcoming agenda for the South African, uh, African BRIC summit is once again the common currency. So figures like, um, phrases like de-dollarization, alternative currency, they have been, you can see they have been um, on the on the higher side recently, uh, peaking in 2019, but then uh, they don't have the data afterwards. But I still believe that this is going to be a very important uh, theme in the global economy moving forward. Finally, the market sentiment tracker, I'm bearish on global economy, and you can see lots of bearish news. Pakistan is in stagflation. G7 ministers have uh, called for Warned of uncertainty, oil demand, oil was oil posted its fourth weekly decline, right? Uh, similarly, recession uh, is to be expected in 2023, second half of it. Unemployment, U.S. unemployment benefits rose 20% to one and a year, uh, one point five year high. Similarly, the M2 demand, uh, the M2 supply ha has been the lowest recently since uh, the depression. So these, 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 like there was a gasoline uh, inventory built as well. So all of these factor. Once again, from the point we started Chinese oil imports and stuff, there is an underlying global uh, slowdown in the global economy. And we'll continue to highlight that uh, as it happens. That's all from my side today. I'll see you next week. Thank you.